Hey everyone, it's Linda with Embroidery Legacy. In this Font Magic lesson, I'm going to show you four different techniques to color in John's cute little glyphs with light density fills. Come on, let's get started. <laughs> Okay, let me show you fun four ways to fill in ESA glyphs. You'll find ESA glyphs in the bottom of the font drop-down box. John labels them all with a ZZ in front of their name. And if you scroll down to the bottom of your fonts, you will find them at the bottom. So the first one we're going to use is the Sports 2 glyphs. I like to bring it on screen at 35 millimeters. So if you don't have 35 millimeters, please type it in here. And if you click on insert character, you will now see all the little glyph designs that are included in this glyph pack. So we'll scroll down to D, which is the soccer ball, and we'll select OK. And it comes up on screen. I'd like to also come under stitching, and I'm going to beef up the pull compensation to 0.35. And it just makes the satin stitches just a little bit wider, giving us better coverage over the fill. The next step is to come under Create Layouts and Create Outlines and Offsets. And you want to make sure that the outlines are not selected. And we will be using an offset today. And I'll have it set at minus 0 0.50 millimeters. We'll have an offset count of one, a single run, and you use a color that is not the same as the satin stitch. And make sure Include Holes is not selected and say OK. Now we have an outline that we will now turn into a fill. So we may need to select it and come up here and change from outline to fill. So our outline is a fill now and we need to lighten that density. So come under Stitch Settings and type in 1.2 and Travel on Edge and come over to Stitching and we will remove the underlay and now click on effects and there's a tool in here that I'm not sure everybody's aware of but it's called the Florentine effect and you'll see how it works in just a second so scroll down oh here it is click it now notice the angle of our fill it's going straight across when I click Florentine it curves following the shape of the soccer ball and it's just that fast and easy to add a fill to a glyph and we're just going to pop it up to the top of the sequence so we have it selected and it's now we'll stitch first and then the satin stitch will stitch second we'll just change that to black all you have to do is save this as an emb file and then also save it as your machine file and you can stitch it out on any of your projects for our next technique to fill in glyphs we will use the christmas 2 glyph pack so go down into your font drop down box and find the Christmas 2 elements. 35 millimeters is all set and use the insert character tool to scroll down to find Santa. So we'll click Santa. We'll say OK. He pops up on screen, but we also need to increase his pull comp. So we'll come back in to stitching and type in 0.35 and the the width will increase slightly. We will now go back to the Create Outlines and Offsets. And it was set from the last time we used it. So it's minus 0 0.50. We're going to have one count in a single run. And we want to ensure that Include Holes is not selected. And when we pop this up, you'll notice that you have a separate offset around the mustache we're going to delete it because we don't need it and we'll delete the two little eyes and the pom-pom so now we're just left with the hat but i don't want to fill the hat inside the brim i just want to fill the top portion of the hat so i'm going to select it you can first change the color to red and if you type h on the keyboard it is the reshape mode and all the nodes that created this offset appear. I'm just going to drag my cursor over a few of the nodes. I'll turn purple, which means that they've been selected, and I'm just going to delete them. And notice how I accidentally clicked on to the satin outline. I'm going to hit escape and reselect 
my my hat. So if that happens to you, just deselect it and and reselect that the hat. And we of course need to go back to reshape and delete some of these nodes. So I'm just going to click on them and I can manually delete them. And I'm going to just grab this node right here. I'm going to move it up to the top. I'm going to move this square note. It's square, but if I type tap on my space bar, it will turn it to a curve node and it will follow the shape of the brim better. Now you know what to do. We're going to change this outline to a fill and we will lighten that density, travel on edge, and you'll see a lot of this is, is repetition, but the way the different glyphs are created, you might have to use a different technique to fill them in, and that's what I'm showing you here. And now the last thing to do is the Florentine effect, and we'll bump that up in the sequence stalker. And you'll notice too on the Florentine effect, because I have it in reshape mode still, you'll notice this arch. So you can actually change how how the fill is going to curve around your design. So you have definitely have control of how you want the arch to go. If you bend it too far, it'll just snap back to the default. So now you're just ready to save this clip as an EMB file and as your machine for file format and get ready to stitch it out. And I will show you a new technique with a different glyph. For this glyph, we're going to use the Sports 1 elements. So select that. We'll bring it in at 35 millimeters. And of course, you can make glyphs larger too. 35 is between 20 to 35 millimeters, about as small as I'd like to go, but always do a test stitch out because. I do bend the rules sometimes and I've been known to make things smaller or quite large. But for these little examples, for these quick little glyphs, we're just going to use them at 35 millimeters. So we'll come down and I want you to select this football helmet. And just like the last time, we'll, we will increase that pull comp to 0.35. and we'll come over to Create Outlines and Offsets. It's still set to what I used the last time, which is minus 0 0.50, single run and no holes, which is fine, but I want you to look to see what happens when we have this option. When we do it this way, it outlines the entire helmet. It doesn't just do this top portion. So I'm gonna show you the trick on how we can just fill in this top portion and not do the face mask down here. So I'm just going to click undo. We need to select this glyph and go under edit objects and we are going to break it apart. So it's now in its individual pieces and we will add the offset to the helmet and the earpiece. So I'm going to select the helmet and we'll come out under the create layouts. and the setting is still set at minus 0 0.50. Click OK. We will do the same for this little earpiece. And we'll create that offset. Say OK. And I'm going to move this up one spot in the sequence stalker because I'll show you why. I'm going to select both of these offsets and we'll change them to a fill. And I'm now only going to select the little fill that goes inside this earpiece. And if I come up to Edit Objects, I'm now going to select Remove Overlap. Look at the helmet. There's been a hole that's been created there. So we no longer need to have this fill right here, and I'm just going to simply delete it. We were just using it basically like a cookie cutter to cut that hole inside the helmet. So I will select it and again we'll do the same thing. We're going to lighten that density in the travel on edge and add that Florentine effect. And then there's one last step. So I'm going to move this to the top of the sequence stalker by clicking this move to the top arrow. 
We're going to branch these pieces right here. So we're going to select this first object, hold down the shift key until you come to the helmet. The earpiece is separate, so you can't branch them, but these pieces all touch together. So if you come under digitizing and branching, you'll now click enter twice and those objects will now be branched back together. So this is another way to create a fill in your glyphs. For this last glyph, we're going to make it a two color glyph using the education elements. We'll bring it in at 35 millimeters. And when you click on the insert character tool, scroll down to the bottom until you find the book with the apple and say, okay, change the Den or the pull comp, not the density, pull comp to 0.35 to increase that satin width. When we come over to create layouts and offsets, I want we to select the offsets minus 0.5. When you click OK, notice how it just goes around the exterior of the book. We want to actually have it come in and fill in some of these shapes. So we'll select that and delete it and start over. But this time, instead of the offset, we're going to use the outlines and we'll have it as a single run. And notice how we have individual outlines on each side of the satin stitch. Well, we don't need the inside of the book pages and we don't need the exterior of the book and we don't need this little piece right here. So because we have this set at an outline. It's just going right at the edge of the satin stitch. So this is where you need to come back and it, it's a few extra steps, but it will give you your desired effect. Let's select the leaf and we'll go back under offsets. So this time I want to have a 0.5 millimeter. So that's, this is going to then have that offset go inside the satin stitching. So I can deselect it. Let's make this green. We'll change it to a fill. And this time, let's just change it to a satin stitch. And we'll move that up into the top sequence stalker. So you got a little satin stitch inside the leaf. Next, let's do the book. We'll do the same thing. I'm going to select this book cover and we will do a 0.5 offset will go on the outside of the book and we'll delete the pink change this to our fill change the stitch spacing to 1.2 treble on edge and remove underlay and this one we will just keep straight we won't add the Florentine effect we'll bump this up to the top of the sequence stalker and finally, the apple will do the same thing. We're going to add that 0.5 millimeter offset. Delete the pink. And change this to red. And a fill. And the final thing to do, I think you know the routine now, is change the density to 1.2. Travel on edge. No underlay and we'll add the Florentine effect. And pop that to the top of the sequence. So now you have three colors to fill your glyphs with. So I hope you enjoyed watching all these different techniques to add fun, colorful, and shapely fills to your glyph designs. Enjoy watching these stitch out now.